Okay, we have the tips ground down, the riser fade outs been in place. Uh, this particular bow I marked when I tillered it. This is the upper limb, this is the lower limb, so I'm going to turn it around and just remark the center, all right, which I have already done, but just re And I marked it on the other side, so we're going to put it right here too. All right, there's the center marked. Now we'll take our template, make sure we mark the lower, the lower end where your handle's gonna go for your hand. So I lay my template on there, about centered, line it up best you can, and draw the shape. Now you can make any shape you want. This is just one I use works well for me and quite often I will in fact change the uh, actual shape of the bow so I'm just gonna mark where I want the handle to be alright it's gonna come out down here so we have the riser I'm just going to freehand sketch in the handle It's just a kind of standard shape that I use. And when I hand sculpt it, I will in fact change it exact. Not, I won't be exactly the same. This is just a guideline ultimately to do my routing and band sawing with. You can see that the uh, risers here and the handle is right here it doesn't cut deep into the thin maple mat lamination it stays on this side and on the riser i have a curved riser top here which most commercial bows will never do it's just too time consumptive but i don't like the straight lines where they just bandsaw cut a window out of it so what we're going to do is we're going to make this slope in but also on a curve so it's a compound curve but when we go to uh, route it, all right, we need to look at the top. You can see the center line there. And we have to remember that the window curve comes like this. So if you look at that, you, you can see the curve or the window this way and the curve this way. So that means when we route, we can't route further back than this point of the curve. So we've got to come up here and we've got to draw a straight line from there down to there. So it's like stair steps. All right. So what we've done is we're going to route out all this part here, but we have to do it in steps so we don't cut into the arc that we're going to sculpt later. Anyway, so we're going to start here and we'll route all the way down, then we'll come down to here and then route all the way down and then we'll come down to our center line here and route all the way down and stay just outside of our handle here the shelf where the arrow goes and we'll do a final cut with it to make it all perfectly smooth so it's a lot easier to sculpt later the closer you can actually put your shelf 
to your hand and to the center of the bow, actually the, the less difference you have between the tiller and the limbs and the less parallax siding issues you have and you, by tilting your bow or vertical parallax as well. So I like to have it when my hand's in place, the arrow is really just above the palm of my hand. And we'll see that down the way here as we work through this bow.
the routing was is we had our top part of the shelf here, this first quarter inch bit routed all the way down. Then we dropped the router down and we routed all the way down with it. And then we dropped it down to center, a little off center actually, and routed all the way down. And then with the bit fully extended all the way down, we did the shelf in one pass to make it absolutely as smooth as possible. And you'll see this one as you shoot this bow in time, you can see that the shelf, which is right here, is going to be really close to is going to be really close to the hand when it's all done and said. You can do this with a bandsaw if you don't want to chew up your bandsaw blades. I recommend routing it down. Bits are a lot cheaper to resharpen and then buy in total new bandsaw blades. However, when it comes time to shape. You're going to cut in with a jigsaw in certain places and then bandsaw it. And that will save your bandsaw blade immensely. So anyway, you have it all shaped in and everything. And you can see how it is actually routed out in three stages. We've done a little bit of sawing with the bandsaw or a jigsaw to cut out the back and the handle into the face. So what we're going to do now is we're going to use the belt sander. I've elevated the belt so it's easier to view. I like having it down lower because I can actually apply more force on it. And if you buy a belt sander, I recommend you get one that's 2 horsepower and 220 volt. You just get more power out of your belt sander that way. You can buy real cheap small ones and it can be done with them. It's just the process will be a lot slower. So we're going to start sculpting now and I'll show you how I tackle it. What I'm going to do is I'm going to work right in here and tapered down the sides. I'm going to put a bit of a curve up here and here and I'm going to work on rounding the back. I'll work on putting a dip in where the handle goes on both sides and then of course we'll start working on rounding these. We can do a lot of the work right on the belt sander and you can see where I stepped the router cuts one two three steps so the dish you don't have to belt sand all that off. It's just a little easier to do. Also, the dust, this is black walnut, which is hard on lungs. And fiberglass is particularly hard on lungs. So make sure you've hooked up your dust collector. I use a, a vacuum, a shop vac attached to the hose. I've shown you that device I hooked up to the back side with just a band clamp and a piece of plywood. So the vacuum sucks 90% of the dust in and wear a respirator as well you'll be a lot better for it. As far as respirators go you can buy the little paper ones, they're dirt cheap uh, I prefer these they have kind of a rubber mesh on the outside a little breather hole here and they keep their form a lot better and they last longer, you can vacuum them off and use them even longer or you can break down and buy a really good respirator with changeable cartridges. That's probably recommended. But I don't like the rubber faces. They sweat on my face and all that. And these don't. And they do the job. Okay. So just thought I'd throw that out there. See, I've started working on the compound curve here, and it's much easier to do with the parts routed out. It's coming down much faster, and I'm just going on the drum and rotating it and pressing in and being careful. You don't want to go past the center mark, so you work carefully down to that. I've started putting a little bit of round down here and narrowing this down in here. I am going to start working on this part where the handle goes right in here, and of course it's flat on this side. 
inside here, the bulk of this is going to be done with a, a rasp. It's coming along, and that's just a couple minutes. That's how we rough it in. So I'm not going to spend an hour here showing you how I do it. It takes it takes about an hour to get this all roughed into where you can start actually working on it with a file, and it starts looking like a real bow. And it's getting closer all the time, isn't it? All right, it's been about 20 minutes, I guess, looking at the clock. So this bow, I pretty much roughed in. I've got the handle set in there. Uh, it's going to have a fairly large handle on it because I have fairly large hands. You, and anyway, you can see I've roughed it in just on this belt sander. And the rest of this is all going to be done with files by hand. I actually prefer the hand work. Some people actually prefer to use power carvers and things. And you can do that, but I'm here to tell you the bigger the tool, the bigger the problem. Uh, carving tools, they grab and they jet, and next thing you have a big gouge in your bow and stuff like that. And if you're going to use a, two, a carver, I would use a two handed type carver. I've, I've seen one, I've, I've never looked to purchase one, and it, you hold it in two hands, it had a carbide cutter in the middle, so you just go and peel off like this. You could use a spoke shave and do much of that too, except where the glass is. Uh, I, I'm just not fond of using power carvers. I tried using them in the beginning to expedite things, and it really just slowed things up, and I wrecked some handles and had to jerry-rig how I formed them. All right, this one uh, is coming along just fine. You can see you can't get the belt sander in here, so you can see it's quite wide in there. And so we'll have to get in there with the rasp and make that right. I have the window here curved in real nice, but I didn't go right into where I just stopped just where the router ended. And so there's a little bump right right along here that I'm going to have to file out to feather everything in perfect because if you go in there with the belt sander you actually hit too hard you'll have a dish in your window so avoid that bring it down till it's close and then finish the rest by hand that would be my recommend hey right. so there we go that one's kind of roughed in we're going to do roughing today I'm not going to do any hand work so I got one two three four five six more bows to work on today uh, it's roughing in just like we did uh, it makes the shop a mess I'm using the vacuum. I got to turn the vent on too. I turned it off because it's just too noisy. But we'll, And plus it's sucking out the heat. It's cold outside and snow on the ground and uh, long story short, uh, it sucks all the heat out when it's taking the dust out. So you got to turn the heaters up and all this. You can't. Anyway, it's all kind of noisy. Earplugs are probably a great idea or hear muffs. I didn't mention that here. I'm half deaf anyway. Uh, I should have been wearing ear muffs when I was doing this. I have a pair right up here on the drill press. Uh, I prefer this kind that go on like this. They're really good if you actually put them on. Otherwise, it's a waste of money. So anyhow, uh, use your earmuffs, use your respirator when you're doing this process.